What specifically is detachment therapy? Detachment therapy is basically, now I call it detachment therapy, it's been called, uh, the Baldwin's called it spirit releasement therapy. They, um, uh, he trademarked that. Then he trademarked spirit releasement. Uh, to me, those are fear-based things when you start. Yeah, they do sound kind of scary. You know, uh, trademarking and hanging on when you're grasping at stuff, it's like, it's all about the love, you know. Mm. <laughs> and that's really the thing. When I teach this stuff, it's, it, it's vital that people understand that it's all about the love. You come from a love base and you can do this work. Now, <clears throat> the work itself, basically it's, it's about people that when they die, they don't get over to the light for one reason or another. Uh, and there's a whole host of reasons that don't take too long to explain all of them, but uh, sometimes they don't know they're dead, sometimes they don't think, and this is the sad thing, they don't think they're, they're worthy enough to go to the mm -hmm. light. They're taught... Yeah, they feel like they've sinned or something. Oh, heaven forbid that they've sinned. Yeah. Well, and, Who hasn't? <laughs> and so many. Well, have we missed the mark? Yes, we've mm -hmm. missed the mark. Are we, are, we, uh, are we manifesting love wholly and completely like, completely like we're supposed to be doing? No, not yet. That's why we keep coming back. But, and but stands for behold the underlying truth. There's, there's a, you know, we, we are taught, we're programmed in religion that we're, we're unworthy to come to the Father, okay? Which is so far from the truth. Right. You know, we all get to go home. And that's the beauty of this, this work, is we all get to go home, no matter how bad you might have been or how bad you think you are, or how bad you, you're going to be, we always get to go home. So some of these guys are floating around. Some of the time, instead of just floating around, they'll mm -hmm. attach to somebody. Sometimes they'll bring their afflictions along. So let's say there's somebody who has um, all kinds of heart issues, but there's nothing medically that you can mm -hmm. discover. It's possible that somebody who died of a heart attack entered that person for some reason or another and has resided in his heart and is causing that pain because it, it's... Could it be emotional stuff as well? Like well, emotional hurts or, you know, I, I think the world is a bad place sort of philosophies or... That the host feels that way? Or, no, I'm, or the, the, the spirit the, that the attaches. Spirit. Yeah, the attachment, the entity. There's, there's lost souls and there's dark ones. Those okay. are kind of the two flavors we got. Um, but lost souls, there's, there's, yeah, there's all kinds of emotions. Mm -hmm. um, there's, uh, my wife picked one up uh, at a bar one time. We were visiting a friend and we, we stopped by this bar. And, and she was cute. And uh, so she said, Don, I've got somebody in my leg. So we did the work and, and there was this guy uh, who happened to, he lost his leg earlier before he died. Mm. That's why he she went into the leg. Um, but he came into her because she was pretty and because it was a bar, she thought, well, I'd get that sensation of drinking. I said, well, she doesn't drink. He said, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it. But then he got stuck there. Uh -huh. So we helped him into the light, and it was all fine. Because they don't know that they can go to the light. That's the right. thing. Right. They, they don't know. They're afraid. Uh, here's another example. You give them permission, don't you? Well, well yeah. Well, I'm kind of like a salesman. Yeah. I, I, gotta I kinda show them how uh, it's a better idea the to The benefits. Go home. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, one of the things, when they don't feel like they're worthy enough, I ask them, um, if you had a kid that went down the block and broke a, a window, what would you want them to do? Run away or come home? They always say, well, I'd want them to come home. Mm -hmm. He says, why would you want to? He, he broke a window. Well, because I love him. Aha. That's what God <laughs> heals, yeah. And I said, take, take the amount of love that you would have for your kid, multiply that by anything. And it still doesn't come close to the amount of love that the father has for you. Hmm. And then they begin, <coughs> they begin to get it. And that's the thing that, that's yeah. so cool about it. So what have you seen in your work with detachment therapy um, that really transforms someone's life? Because I imagine, I've known people with the experience of um, having the alcoholic spirits attach. Mm -hmm. And it's... It can give people cravings and things that aren't their own, but if they don't recognize that, they, well, I, I believe yeah. they could become alcoholics or drug addicts. Oh, sure. Well, they'll, they'll come across as that and be like, right. oh, all of a sudden they're fine, and then, then bam, they're, they're an alcoholic. And it's like, why, yeah, why it, it's am I something craving that, this? So have you ever come across somebody that, that 
had this spirit that was causing them to do things that was out of character and then once they release it, it ch totally changed their life? Well, One of the things that, that was very uh, uh, profound in, in uh, a fella, he was uh, 60 some years old, he uh, kind of a short fella, and uh, he had this pain in his shoulder for 50 years in his, in his right arm. Mm -hmm. He could not raise his arm above his shoulder height uh, without extreme pain. He tried all kinds of medical things and, and uh, just a whole host of things, thousands of dollars over the years. In one session, we discovered that there was an entity in. Now this is, this is what's really interesting is the uniqueness of this. Mm. <clears throat> in the, the, the first of all, we found this, this uh, street kid who had died and had come in and he said, why are you here? He says, well, he invited me. Why would he invite you? Well, mm. he didn't want to throw the ball. He didn't want to be in sports. So he had an excuse. So his subconscious invited this fella in. Right. Okay, it was an opening. You know, you know uh, if our auric field is open in some ways, that, that gives us an opening. We get banged in the head, that's an opening. An injury of some kind. There's Can it happen a, when you're Ill, really ill as well? Because oh, they sure. say when you're really ill, you're weakened and things yeah. attach. So he started, he, he curled up, he was on a, on a bed. We were at a conference. Mm -hmm. And, and we, so we were on a, on a, he was on a bed. And he curled up in the fetal position and was crying and felt so bad for all that he's done and everything. He said, it's okay. And he's talking through this man's body, talking the street kid. Man. We wow. always say this entity can speak through like Bob or whoever yeah. without harming him in any way. So, so it's, voices it's, literally come out of people. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, when my wife and I, my wife and I, see, we can do this one-on-one. -on -one. That was a one-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one thing. We can also do it remotely where we go through somebody, like I could go through you to, you go off, a part of you would go find this, this other soul, and then you do the scan and all that stuff. There's many ways to do yeah, it, yeah. Many ways to do it. Um, and then, and then I'd say, you know, and they can speak through DD without harming her in any way. And then it's not quite channeling where you would step out and this person would step through. It's just using the voice box and stuff. Right, Sometimes so he's aware the, the whole time that a yeah. voice is coming through him and he's, Probably going wow. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty fascinating. It's pretty After freaky for the person. Out, yeah, it can be, but they know that they're in a, a love space. It's real important. Yeah, to do that. This fella, after we got everybody cleared and into the light, he got up off the bed and was waving his arm around all over. He says, "I haven't been able to do this for fifty years." I was going to tell you another interesting case about getting rid of all the other people's stuff first. Okay. We had a client, uh, my wife and I. Uh, but she was diagnosed with 26 multiple personalities. Wow. And she was heavily into drugs and, and all this stuff. I mean, she was really mm, messed up. Mess, yeah. yeah. So we went in and we got it down to six. There were, there were 20 that didn't belong there at all, but six were splinters of her real personality. Oh, okay. So we cleared, cleared those 20 over and then we, we investigated and these six really were her. Mm-hmm. So after we did the work, the psycho psychotherapy that she was going through seemed to take a great leap forward and there's less right. drugs, you know, to keep things balanced and everything and she's fine. Now she's fine and she's got a job and she's just great. Mm. But when you've got all that going on, there's no way you can get straightened down. So get that stuff out, mm -hmm. clean out the closet from other people's stuff first and then you can deal with the issues that could be past life regression issues or any number of things. It could be just, it could be real chemistry, you know, and, and really need to have a particular right. drug to help balance things out. I mean, it, it, that, that, that's, I go along with that too. Hmm. But <clears throat> quite often this detachment therapy stuff is the last thing that we find out about. Well, it doesn't, it's not your normal, hey, I got to go down to the, oh, it's a little weird the detachment guy to get the spirits off yeah. me. It's not exactly... It's you not know, mainstream. Mainstream, for yeah. sure. And people are afraid of it. It might be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or psychic. Tell us about those different areas. Like, what well, would you see that on the spiritual level that someone might need to heal? Oh, there might be a, bar a dark spot uh, in their throat, we'll say. Okay. And we find out that uh, there's a... In childhood, they were playing by a well, and they slipped, and they fell. And when they got up, uh, suddenly they they kind of remember something that happened then, 
and there was something about the throat, there was an itchy throat or something, or it just didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And then as they go through life, uh, every time they're in a certain situation, suddenly the throat closes up, uh, there might be asthma, it might be fear of some kind, uh, they might have started stuttering, and you go back to the origin of that, you get back to the fall, and then what I'll have them do is, is right now, with um, a sense of higher frequency, higher higher vibration, look at the look at the scene and tell me what's not uh, quite right about that. You'll know it. You'll sense it. You'll see it. You'll experience it some way. And then mm -hmm. say, oh, there's a little another little girl sitting here by the well who. Uh, years ago, stripped and fell and hit her head on and died there. Oh, so it's and past trauma. Yeah, so it can be past trauma of an earthbound entity. An earthbound oh. entity is, uh, if you remember the motion picture Ghost with Patrick Swayze, mm -hmm. there's a scene where he's shot and he's laying on the ground, but yet you see him running after the guy that shot him. And then he comes back and here's the girlfriend hovering over this guy that looks like him. He's trying to figure out what's going on here. And in the background, you see a beam of light coming down. And then he's looking at her, and she's talking to the body there, and she says, don't leave me, you bastard, or something along mm -hmm. those lines. And then there's a shot of him where he gets this look on his face, well, what? Leave you? Why would I leave you? And about that time, the light in the background fades. Mm -hmm. At that point, his vibration, his, fre fre his frequency is he's trapped in the earth plane here. And so he can only function as a spirit in the earth plane. Now you read about near-death experiences, mm -hmm. and they all talk about um, how you think of you think a thought, and suddenly you're, you're in Russia. You think another thought, suddenly you're in Spain. So transportation is astral e travel. And easy. <laughs> you're talking about astral travel. Yeah. Okay. So just that fast, uh, that power is there. Um, they they can see and hear and they go to talk to somebody and all of a sudden this person is acting like they don't even hear them. Or they walk right through Oh, you're through talking that. about an earthbound spirit. Yeah. So had this, li when she was young, did she pick up a, a spirit from a yeah. girl who died by the yeah. well? And, what, and because she's got a body, she is able, uh, she's, she is experiencing the memories of the earthbound spirit and they're being activated in her physical body. And that spirit is actually attached to her in that, some way? Yeah, that spirit is attached. And, oh, so, and, so, so, you're what, and so what you do is you, most of the times you have to let the, the, the um, spirit realize that they're dead. And that's easy enough to do. A couple of questions, you say, what year is it for you right now? And if they tell you 1834, then all of a sudden you know well, it's, not, yes. it's not her and it's yeah. not her past life. Is this your body? No, this isn't my body. I was a young boy, or I was a... Get the idea? Mm -hmm. They'll tell you exactly what's going on. Hmm. And when that happens, why, uh, you know, then you start dealing with the entity as your client. And then get them to ready to be released into the light, uh, to transition into the light. And when that part of the agreement is that you take with you all negative... Uh, experiences and energies and memories and feelings that the little girl is suffering in, uh, with you let those negative energies be transformed into the light and then brought back as a positive healing force and source for this other person hmm. and then that way they're free of it and then suddenly they start speaking or they're they're over their asthma their uh, uh, their own full-grown self or well, not full-grown but they are themselves themselves yeah. yeah I had a woman in um, I think it was Utah or some one of those states somewhere. And she contacted my wife and I. My wife and I, on occasion, we do remote therapy. My wife becomes mm -hmm. a medium and I'm, I'm the therapist. And she said, my little eight-year-old granddaughter lives west someplace. And she said, something's happened to her. I don't know what. Uh, she's not an eight-year-old girl anymore. She said, uh, the... She's acting up. There's all kinds of things going on. The uh, the parents are taking her to psychologists, psychiatrists. They're putting her in therapy. They're drugging her, and it's just not right. Something didn't make sense for her. Something. Yeah. That, this was not her granddaughter. She yeah. knew that. Mm -hmm. 
So she sent us a picture, and my wife, uh, you know, went into the altered state after studying it, and we found out that attached to the eight-year-old, and I don't know just how or when it happened, was a young teenage girl who was in a, had been placed in a psychiatric hospital, had been raped and killed in the psychiatric hospital, oh, and somehow attached to this little eight-year-old. Well, we did that. We did the session. And then a few months later, the grandmother wrote a letter and said, thank you for returning my eight-year-old daughter. Hmm. Uh, she's, uh, she's now her sweet, loving self, whereas before she would walk into the lunchroom and she would uh, go up to the handicap table, steal their food and all kinds of stuff. It just wasn't her. Huh. And then everything was returned back to normal, and that was just a one-session deal. This is what you call... The spirit releasement yeah, part of it. Yeah, spirit releasement. And do you find, they say that sometimes they, people who have addictions mm -hmm. have spirits attached to them yeah. that are trying to get their needs met through the person. Exactly. Because I had one woman uh, uh, tell me that she, uh, she started out, and it's always funny how they start out, mm -hmm. well, I have this friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, Tell me about the friend. She says, "Well, she's uh, back on grass and uh, and uh, cocaine again." She says, "You know, and the interesting thing is, my friend says she doesn't even like doing it. She just finds herself doing it. Finds herself doing it is the first clue mm -hmm. that there's an external force there." So uh, I said, "Well, never mind your friend. Let's just tell me what's going on." She said, "Well, she said, you know, I'm." doing this again and she said I'm afraid because I don't want the DPSS coming in and taking my kids and mm -hmm. she said I, but I just can't help myself doing it. I said okay. I said do you know when this impulse started? She says yeah it was October 31st 1980 whatever it was. I said well who died in the house? She says well nobody. I said alright who died in the neighborhood? She said well how do you know that? I says I don't know that. I said I don't know anything. I'm just asking questions. Did somebody die in the neighborhood? She said, yeah. I said, when did they die? She said, it was mid uh, just after midnight on the 31st of October. I said, tell me what happened. She said, well, there's a house, uh, Kitty Wampus across the alley from us. that caught on fire, and there was a young teenage boy that died in there. And uh, I said, well, tell me about the boy. She said, well, I never really met him, but he was one of these kids that he was always, always, always in trouble. If doesn't make a difference mm. if he was just born. He was in trouble for that. If he was in school and something happened, everybody knew that he did it. He said the whole neighborhood hated him hmm. because he knew they knew he was behind everything. And I said, okay. I said, uh, did you ever meet him? He said, well, only once. I said, uh, she said, I was outside sweeping the porch and I turned around and he was about eight years old. And he was walking on the, the, uh, the sidewalk past the house and I looked at him and I looked into his eyes. And I said, tell me about his eyes. She said, it was like looking into the eyes of a wild animal. Hmm. I said, really? She said, yeah. I said, all right. I said, here's my two cent analysis. Well, we talked a little bit more. And she said, well, when they brought him out of the garage where he was sleeping, at, where his bedroom was, or, uh, the whole block cheered. This upon his death. Yeah, about his oh. body coming out. She said that one one of the men were a That's uh, very cruel. was a fireman, <laughs> and he said had he been on duty and had he known it was this house, he said he would have given up his job before he would have come to put out the fire. Oh my goodness! And she said, and I was shocked at what I heard. I said, all right. I said, uh, here's my two cent analysis. I says the kid is attached to you. He was he strung out on drugs and physically abused and he abused alcohol too. I said, he's attached to you and what you're experiences, experiencing in your body are his cravings. Okay. So she came out and this is again one session. She came out and uh, we found indeed, yes, the kid was attached to her. Yes, indeed, the kid... Uh, was attracted to her because of her compassion that nobody else had and that uh, he was ready to make the transition but there was something not quite right I said well tell me I said 
why would somebody choose and this is the in-between life stuff now when you when you're getting ready to come in you've got the, the advisory council there to help you to select your your life coming in in most cases <laughs> he said well he said it's the only way I could uh, save my father save his father from by what? choosing to come in to be the the, the father's kid uh -huh. it's the only way he could save his father that's why he chose to come into an abusive life. Oh. And I said, okay. I said, was there some kind of an agreement between you and this woman to make it possible for you to save the father? He says, yeah. Well, I, I knew what the next question was going to be, and I hmm. knew what the answer was, but I had to ask anyway, just in case I was wrong. I said, was there some kind of ag agreement between you, this woman, and myself to help you to free your father and your grandfather, because his grand there was a generational thing here, where the grand uh, the the father had the grand his father attached to him, and attached to him was another generation, and attached to him was a demonic whose purpose to come in was to screw up that whole lineage of that particular mm. family. I don't know why, some curse or something I imagine, but I didn't go that far into it. Right. So the answer was yes. So in other words, I and this woman made an agreement with him w uh, when he came into life there that we would help him save his father and his grandfather and the great grandfather. Okay. And so we made the we we took and we got everybody all lined up. We got all the negative energies and memories released. We cleared up that family lineage and sent them all up and off and into the light. Mm-hmm. And. That was it for a craving, no more. From that, from Off that the moment drugs. On. Yeah.